Hey everyone, it's Monday the 8th of May and it's almost 10 past 6 in the evening. Right, today's video. Uh, on the worktop I've got three laptops which I've picked up this morning from Alsham Car Boot and I paid just £10 for all three. Um, so we'll power those up and we'll have a look at those. Um, I've also got a couple of other electronic bits on here we'll um, have a look at and uh, I'll tell you about those and why I bought them. Um, but before we get into that, I want to talk about the supernatural. Now I know there's lots of people out there that don't believe in ghosts and whatnot, which is perfectly fine. I'm not out there to try and convince people otherwise. I just want to share my own personal experiences. So, a little bit of background. Um, I have actually got a video clip on the channel where some orbs were spotted by one of my viewers actually um, floating around me. Well, it was an unboxing video, I was unboxing some barricade lamps. It's a few years old now. Um, yeah, it is actually quite a few years old. Three? No, actually I'm going to say about four or five years old that video now. Um, and they were seen in the bedroom, which is exactly where I've had a number of experiences. That's actually one of the reasons I haven't got a bedroom door. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty much why I believe myself. Because, And it's not just in this flat, I've experienced things elsewhere. In fact, I'm pretty certain it's me this spirit or spirits are clinging to not the property I've lived in because it's I've seen things and experienced things in different places um, uh, one was actually including something appearing on my bedside cabinet all by itself and my brother who was living with me at the time swears he did not move it and to be fair, I actually quite believe him because he's not the sort that would, you know, interfere with other stuff. <clears throat> you know, stuff that's not his, so... Yeah, I'm actually going back quite a long time with that one. Um, so, anyway. Well, uh, yesterday I decided to download the Spirit Talker app for the phone. I've already got the free one, I can't remember what it's called. Because um, I've been watching a YouTube who does a lot of urban exploring and every once in a while he'll do one where he does a paranormal in investigation. And uh, I was watching a video of his yesterday and he was using the Spirit Talker app. Now I will admit I was quite sceptical <laughs> on these apps, you know. Um, but after using it last night with what I actually experienced last night, I think there is true a lot of truth to those apps that they do actually work. So what I did about 9:30 last night, I turned everything off in the flat. Um, well, actually, at first I had the kitchen light on and the lounge light on. Now, while I was walking around, I didn't get a very good response from it in these two rooms, in the kitchen and the lounge. Even with the lights off, because I did turn the lights off later, the best response I was getting was in the bedroom, where I've had a lot of experiences. I've heard things move at night. Um, you know, I've heard all sorts in that bedroom at night. Uh, usually between or sort of after the same hour, usually after 2am. Um, and it was so frequent at one point, but that was one of the reasons I would wait till that sort of time in the morning before I went to bed. Anyway. Um, that's, it, that's the same room those orbs were spotted in. That's where I was doing the unboxing, I was doing it in that room. So, while I'm chatting to this app, the spirit, 
asking it questions and I was actually getting legit answers. I'm getting a few random ones thrown in there as well, but if you ask any investigator, they will tell you that some spirits just like to, well, fuck with you, basically. They like to do that and be random. Um, so, you know, I can't remember where I was going to go with that now. <laughs> Anyway, one of the things, because I actually sat on the bed, in the, this, at this point I had the whole flat in darkness, I had everything, I actually had the PC on, that was it. Um, but yeah, the best response I was getting was in the bedroom, so that was the first thing that you know started to convince me that the app actually was working. Um, so, I'm sitting on the bed with the phone in my hand hand and smudge is actually on the floor by my feet and I think you know, I was asking it to do two things I was asking it to move something on the side because I had all the TV and whatnot and all the other crap on that bench to my right so I was actually asking it to move things on there to let me know it was actually there and I was also asking it to touch this I've seen a lot of investigators use these. Little flashing cat balls. Now, I did hear, I must have asked it a good half a dozen times, you know, to move something on that side. I did hear th um, something happen three times. Um, but I could not get anything from this. No reaction from this at all. I'd left this on the... Um, bench with all the other stuff as well in a big sort of cleared spot so i think by about 10 30 i gave up i didn't actually turn the app off properly so it didn't save the uh, conversation unfortunately um and then the other odd thing is it was actually throwing out some names that i recognized as well um that were personal to me which I also thought was um, a good indication that it's actually genuine. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I shut it off, turned all the lights back on, back on the computer for a couple of hours. Actually, mum had phoned me in that time as well. And then I went to bed. And I'm sitting on the bed, I'm sitting up in bed antacid in my mouth and I'm playing games on the phone just random games just like a sliding block puzzle that I'm addicted to playing at the minute and Smudge is laying down by my feet on the bed now I shit you not I must have been sitting there for a good quarter of an hour this fucking thing pardon the language but this fucking thing suddenly started flashing all on its own I didn't even hear it move, but it started flashing. Two hours after I was, well, if, if I was recording, you would have seen me pretty much begging it to touch this. Nope, wouldn't do it. Two hours later, when I'm sitting quiet in the bedroom, this thing goes off. Now, they can't go off unless something nudges it, which is why they use these in the investigations. Because they are that sensitive. You know, and I've had these turned on since I bought them for Smudge uh, last year, actually. I just had them turned on and just left them around the flat. And the only time I've ever seen them go off is when I've actually nudged them. <laughs> or Smudge has been playing with them. Other than that, they will just sit like this, doing absolutely nothing. So, to see that bugger go off on its own gave me goosebumps. So I thought, that's exactly where those orbs have been seen. That's exactly where I heard those sounds from earlier. And that's exactly what I actually asked it to do just two hours late. <laughs> now I do have... A um, relative that passed away a few years ago that would actually play practical jokes like that. In fact my granddad probably would as well. 
Um, yeah, so if you don't believe, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, I'm not out to try and make believers of people. You know, try to persuade you to believe. It's a free world. <laughs> I'm not going to hold it against you. Right. Anyway, that was just probably one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had, I think, so far. But I will say, I'm not scared of it. It gave me goosebumps, but I wasn't scared. Um, yeah. Um, interested. And actually, Smudge is doing right now what he was doing last night while I was talking to that spirit talker up. He's just laying on the floor doing nothing. Not even a reaction to that. <laughs> right. Are you actually all right? Chase that. Yep, he is all right. <laughs> you worrying me because he wasn't doing anything at all. Just laying there with um, eyes half open. Right, let's have a look at these laptops. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You know, maybe you've had some weird experiences. Right, so, I've got three laptops. This HP is the first one. I don't actually know what the model is of this. Does it actually say on that sticker? Product HP G60. Got service tag and everything on it. See all the covers and battery are all intact, all the screws are there. Um, this one does have a keyboard issue. Altec Lansing. Never heard of that. What's that? Is that an NVIDIA sticker? No, it's got a light scribe sticker on it. This might beep quite loudly, hang on. Let me just, uh, that's better. Yeah, because this has got a keyboard fault, which is actually causing it to beep. And it's got a CMOS battery dead as well. So just pressed enter and it wouldn't do anything. I've got a feeling what's happened with this one, someone has probably spilt a drink of something on this. And that's just making the keyboard think and the computer think that uh, there's some keys depressed. But when there isn't. I did. <laughs> See what I mean? The keyboard doesn't want to do anything. So it's got a Samsung hard drive in it. System configuration dated updated error. Yeah, check date and time, yeah, because the CMOS is dead. Sometimes if I do that, it uh, there we go. It seems to like you know free off the key, the stuck key when I do that. Sometimes. <laughs> It looks like it could do with a screen driver as well. Are you actually uh, are you doing anything? Let's do that again. There we go. See what I mean? So what I might do, I'm going to browse eBay. See if I could find a replacement keyboard for this. Because it seems to be that is the only issue. Um, the mouse pad and everything is working fine, it's not too bad cosmetically. I, I could, you know, 
upgrade this, put an SSD in it and hopefully upgrade the RAM. I'll have to look up the specs and see what the max RAM is. I don't even know if this is DDR2 or DDR3. These might have been stored in a slightly damp shed or something because these are both this and that Dell at least. I've got a very slight, that's only surface, slightly rusty VGA socket. Or was it just on this one? Was it on this one? It's not on the Dell because uh, we haven't got a VGA. <laughs> oh yes it has. Oh yeah, that is a little bit on the rusty side as well. Right, what are starting windows? Well, I want to talk about this one. So, a friend of mine popped over over a month ago and, uh, you know, I've known him several years now. We've always done trades for, with each other for various different things. But he was looking for a gaming controller because his one had broken. And last year, I'd actually traded with him for a gaming controller. Um, nice wireless one, wanted to carry case and everything, but I'd never used it. And he bought me two laptops to trade. This Toshiba and a um, Asus. Now, I did manage to get both of them upgraded to 8GB DDR3 RAM. Um, this one's got an Intel dual core, which is 1.6 gigahertz, if memory serves correctly. I've put an SSD in this one. It's not actually secured. But uh, it is working, actually works quite nicely, that one. I really do like it. And of course, it's got Windows 10 on it as well. Now, the Asus, I did exactly the same thing with, although it's got an AMD processor on that one. And it's only a 1 gigahertz dual core processor. But I gave that to another friend of mine who um, he doesn't use a TV or anything like that. Um, he just wanted it so he could shut the PC down at night and just sort of sit on the bed in comfort and watch YouTube videos that way. Um, so that's really all I had to do. So I think the 8 gigabytes of RAM were plenty for that. Um, I did put a Western Digital Blue hard drive in that one because he wanted the extra storage and all I've got are um, 120 gig SSDs which I don't know why I'm looking for it over here because it's not over here. It's uh, buried on the other worktop. I might see if I can find another charger for the Dells because I want to leave this to go through that. And that's going to take a long time. But if I unplug it, then I'm going to have to go through all of this again, so... Uh, I've got a pile of adapters over here. Have I got another one that'll fit a Dell? Just so I haven't got to unplug that one. Uh, would you look at that? The first one I picked up. Well, it's got the right plug on it. Right plug style, but... Sometimes they can either be too small or too big. Because why I'm surprised this HP is actually accepting a genuine Dell power supply. Now these Dell laptops might barely ain't happen because this isn't a genuine Dell supply. My other Dells have. The other Dells I've got in this pile, they don't like it if I plug in a, a non-genuine um, Dell supply. Well that's plugged in so I just need another um, cloverleaf. See if I can slug, slug, slide this um, HP this way a bit. Never been a fan of HP laptops like, or computers. I, I really don't know why. Honestly, I don't. I don't know why. Right. Give that a bit of heat that one, but I suppose it would. Plug this in. Or we could drop it on the worktop. This one, you can tell it's quite old, it's Windows XP, but it is complete. One thing I do like about Dell laptops, 
although they didn't seem to do it with this one. I have to say it's quite nice. I'm definitely keeping it because I like that style. It's got Windows 7 sticker on it as well. Yeah, but what I like about these Dells, where is it? You can actually access the hard drive right there. I've actually got an i7 Dell over there, plus two others. Can't remember what the other two are, but they've got slightly older processors in. Um, well, one's got 4GB DDR2 and one's got 6GB DDR3. It's my little blue one. Can't dig them out at the minute because they're buried. I'll do that shortly. Now, I do know that the keyboard does not work on this. It wants me to press the F1 key, so maybe if I plug in a USB keyboard, like so. He says, now let me go in one way. I don't tell me, I'll press the function key. No. Nope. Let's turn it off. Sometimes if I do this, it will actually boot into Windows. It'll bypass the F1 thing. We'll see if it'll do it, shall we? Oh yeah, new audio works on this one, so it might be a little bit on the loud side. Hit F1 key. Well, it didn't do anything. I wonder when we hit the F1. <laughs> there we go. Dad joke. <laughs> Don't know why I haven't plugged it. Right, I need a bigger worktop. actually works nicely. Again, it's just a dead keyboard. Um, you never know. I'm, I can look this up on eBay. What is it? It's a Latitude D410. So maybe if I look that up on eBay, I might find another one of these going cheap. You know, if I could buy the whole thing for a fair price, then I'd do that. And just steal the keyboard off of it. Uh, Or maybe I can find the keyboard. What are you belly aching about? Check battery. Is this charger not working? I don't think this charger is actually working. What well, it is, it's putting out the power. But I thought that screen looked a bit dark. Isn't that weird? A laptop that old and the battery is still holding a charge. Don't know if it's gonna, you know, stay charged or how long it will hold a charge for. But I will put it on charge tonight. But uh, the odd thing is, oh by the way, I'm gonna be eBaying that one as spares or repairs. It does actually work. I'm probably just going to leave the hard drive and everything in. It's just missing the battery, that's all. And there's no power, power supply for it. Anyway. Here's my little blue Dell. I've got the uh, 6 gigs of RAM installed. And I think I put a Western... Yeah, I did put a Western Digital hard drive in here. Because I do like the Western Digital Blues or Western Digital hard drives in general because they run really, really quiet. But the problem is both this one... And the other two Dells over there have all got dead batteries. This one, however, is a lot older and it's still, you know, clutching on to power, clutching on to charge. Do, 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 do. 
maybe this plug's not actually making good enough connection in there. Maybe that's the issue. That is going to take a seriously long time. It's not even... Anyway, yeah, it didn't change when I unplugged it. Do we get a charge light come on when I plug it in? No, I wonder if I've got another... Um, adapter over here. Well, maybe that one doesn't put out enough juice. Where's my magnifying glass gone? I really must get my glasses sorted out. No, that one isn't going to do it. That's only 18 and a half volt. Right plug, wrong voltage. Wrong plug. Phone's no good. <laughs> wrong plug. This one's got the right plug. Nineteen and a half volts. That one is the correct voltage. What's this one? It was smaller, right? Well, that's nineteen and a half. So it is the right voltage and whatnot. It's just for some odd reason it's not working. Maybe it's not even output any power. Maybe it is just a dud. I mean, the green light was lit up on it. That doesn't mean anything, though. It means actually putting out any power. I'm not seeing any charge light on on that one either. Let's try the other laptop. Maybe this is just picky and just wants a Dell charger. <laughs> Front of this is warboy. That's been there. Uh, Behind the HP. We didn't get any lights there. Are you just turning on now? I don't even know what the hard drive is on this. <laughs> I've not looked. We'll have a little look see. Toshiba power brick. Will that actually fit my one? Where did I put it? There I put it. Oh, it does! I don't know if it's the right voltage or anything. I'll have to change it, but it does fit. And you played some tunage. It's got one terabyte hard drive on it. Holy moly. That I was not expecting. Where's properties? There it is. I'm just seeing if it told me the uh, you know the brand of it. 931 gigabytes. Eight hundred and seventy-eight free. Only fifty-three point two is used. No, it doesn't actually tell me what the brand is in here. At least we know the size of it, though. See, this is working really, really well. I was uh, kinder in two minds where the two are 
upgrade this one or literally just leave it as is and just have you know a decent working Windows 7 laptop just for fun you know, the processor is AMD V140 2.29 gigahertz 64-bit operating system 3 gigabytes of RAM installed 2.75 gigs usable uh, Windows is activated according to this it's got home premium on it service pack 1 I'm not really worried about any of that but this doesn't seem like a bad laptop to just leave as is. I haven't tested the keyboard yet. No, that seems to be working absolutely fine. So, I suppose it's not bad. You know, I've got a completely non-faulty, so far, laptop for a tenner with a gigabyte hard drive. I didn't even look at this one, I don't even know what this one's got. Only that it's a Samson hard drive, it disappeared before I could read off the, uh, the size. I want to leave that one there because I want it to uh, just to sit and charge for a bit. Right. So, me and my infinite wisdom decided when I saw this in the charity shop that I would buy it. So I've now got two PlayStation 2 consoles. But this was only £25. However, I didn't buy it because I wanted a second console. I bought it because it was a complete thing, apart from games obviously, but I had all cables with it um, and two controllers. I wanted the controllers because I've got four and I know at least two of them have got faults because um, a friend of mine discovered them. He was trying to play the PS2 one day. <laughs> we couldn't find a bloody controller that worked. He found one where it had analog stick drift and the other one, I can't remember, it was one of the buttons didn't work. Now for some reason this came with two controllers and both of them are missing the rubber dome off the left analog stick. No idea why. But, uh, I did look on eBay for controllers and if you wanted one in this sort of condition, loose like this, it's at least £10 plus postage for one. And there's no guarantee you're going to find a seller selling two of these. There's no guarantee you'll be able to get like combined shipping or anything like that. Um, you can still buy new ones in the boxes, but they ask, you know, a lot more for those. So I just thought, you know, 25 quid for the lot. I've got a spare console because my um, brother in Ireland, he's got a PS2 console. And a friend of mine that found my faulty controllers has also got one of these. So I thought, well, I'll just tuck this in the cupboard and have a spare. As long as it works, I've not even tested it. I've owned it about three weeks now and I've not even tested it. <laughs> In fact, it's just been sat here like that on the worktop. Um, apart from the AV cable, that is in a box with a PS3 controller that I forgot about. <laughs> um, ready to go over to Ireland to my brother because he wanted an AV cable for his. I'm guessing his only came with an RF cable. So I've got that. <clears throat> But uh, last week's car view, I bought myself this for £10. That seems to be the going price of these car boots lately. £10 this year. Buy anything for £10. But yeah, this is a sharp twin tape deck, you no know, volume tone controls there. Uh, what we got there? Select various select switches, mic on off and what not and dubbing. Um, quite a nice little unit. I really like the look of this one. That's why I bought it. Because um, I have got two other, you know, boom boxes, twin decks. Um, one is a Philips. 
which I don't mind the style of um, and it works beautifully and I actually bought that for less than £10 at a charity shop a number of years ago now and touch wood I've never touched the um, cassette deck bells you know touch wood it is still working fine in fact I was using it recently listening to some um, now that's what I call music tapes I just sat in bed one night with a tape playing and I played it perfect and sounded great as well for a Philips um, yeah this also works fine I haven't found a fault with it and it sounds great but you notice these are oval I thought they were perfectly circled but they're more oval shaped the speaker inside is still circle it's just the grill bit is oval and I have got one more which is an Awa brand which is more like your um, I suppose your budget branded one <laughs> you know your cheaper version and you can just tell from the style it's cheaper but it does work again it's another fully working one at least last time I had it out of the cupboard but yeah, I bought this because I really really like the style of this one and look at that antenna it's like a I was going to say a gold or brass colour it's not brass it is steel it's just the colour they gave it a bit of a, a paint job and I did check, this did come with a power lead as well, I don't know where that is, I don't think I've used it somewhere. Is that it? No, it's a USB cable. Could even be in the pile there. But yeah, these speakers, for something like this, I was actually surprised at how good this one does sound. Although I have to say, this tape deck, when it was playing, it did sound a bit muffled. But once I'd cleaned the heads a little bit, that seemed to have cleared up. But other than that, yeah. Also, I can't show you it because I can't get to it. But I was researching the model number of this and I actually came across the service manual for it on eBay for £6 something. So this is the only vintage piece of electrical equipment I own that I also have the service manual for. Which has got all the wiring diagrams and all sorts in it. You know, and schematics. I just thought for six pounds, I might as well get it. And if I have to repair that in the future, I've got the manual. And maybe, if I decided to sell it in the future, it might increase its value because it's got the manual with it. I don't know. I don't really know what that was worth. I think it was, to me, that was worth more than the ten pound I spent. Personally, I'd have been willing to spend a bit more than that. Now. I did get another radio that same weekend for two quid. It's a little Philips um, portable. I don't know where the battery cover's gone. It's around here somewhere and it did have some leaky batteries in it. Not too bad but they did leak. But that's the least of its problems. Um, I also bought a television from the same guy um, again for ten pounds. There's a theme there, isn't there? You know, £10 for the laptops, £10 for that radio, £10 for a TV. <laughs> anyway, um, he did say the TV worked, and as far as I can tell, yes it does. It's an old portable black and white TV. Literally, it would clear that. You know, it would fit. It's no wider than that. Um, CRT. Probably from the 80s, nice um, silver coloured plastic. Um, it's got a 12 volt um, input jack on it, as well as the 230 volt main. So, going by its side, it's only got like a 10 inch screen on it. It's quite small, smaller than your normal portable TVs, like the one I've got in the bedroom, which you've probably seen in the background. It's got my um, Master System and Mega Drive connected to it at the minute. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that was used in caravans. Hence why it's got the 12 volt jack on it as well. But he did say this was untested. Um, now the radio works fine, that's actually great. And the volume slider here, I literally just sprayed a bit of WD-40 in there. Went like that and it cleaned it. I actually find WD-40 is um, adequate enough for cleaning switches like that. I know people use contact cleaner, but I've looked 
that buying contact cleared out just seems so expensive. It's more, it costs more than a can of WD-40, well last time I looked it did. So I thought, you know what, WD-40 works, I'm just going to use that, <laughs> it's cheaper. Anyway, um, unfortunately tape deck is beyond repair. I thought at first because it was chewing tapes and I figured out it was because the, uh, the play spool wasn't spinning. So I at first I thought, oh, it's just a broken belt, probably. Easy enough fix, and it actually is quite easy on this one. Problem is, it wasn't the belt. <laughs> it was actually the gear wheel. It had completely shattered into about 20 pieces, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> it just completely shattered. Um, and I very much doubt I could get a replacement for this. So, unfortunately, tape deck doesn't work. Radio works great, tape deck, no. Nope. There's a weird sort of translucent yellow plastic as well. And there's two more gears like that on there. I guarantee if I fix one, try to play it, the other two are going to do exactly the same thing. Just because they're, they've gotten old. And they obviously used a shit plastic because they've gone so brittle. They've just pretty much exploded. <laughs> well, that one did. I was um, finding parts everywhere in this, but, you know, as a portable radio, it's perfectly fine. Or even as um, one of my viewers said on the Discord server, it would still make a nice display piece. Or a prop. I could use it for a prop in a play or something, or on TV. <clears throat> you know, a lot of the time they don't have to work, they've just got to look the part on TV. How many times have you watched, um, you know, things that have been filmed these days, but based in like, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, you see radios and things in the background, they're never used. And the chances are they probably don't even work. They are just there as a prop. <clears throat> and that's still going. <laughs> are we close yet? We are actually getting there. We're not that far off now. I don't know if it's the keyboard making it flicker like that or if that's what this stage do. I can't remember. It's been ages since I've done anything with Windows 7. There we go. Oh, at today's car boot as well, I got a bucket load of die casts. So be prepared for another die cast haul video. I've already put one up. Um, but there's a guy that's been there for the last few weeks. Unfortunately today he had to have an ambulance called to him because he collapsed. And uh, some people he actually knew happened to be there and manned the stall for him. They were only there to go and have a look. <clears throat> but pretty much just as they got there, he'd collapsed. Um, but he had... He laid out like at least four rugs or four blankets and they were just full of die cast. Um, but because it was quite quiet today, I've ignored it the last couple of car boots because... Shut up! Thank you. I've ignored it the last, or the first couple of car boots because it was just so overcrowded with kids I couldn't get to the bloody mats. <laughs> I just thought, you know what, I can't be bothered. But today, because it was Bank Holiday Monday, there was like literally a row and a bit. Very few stalls, nowhere near a full field. I just thought, you know what, I'll have a look. And perhaps um, him making some money might cheer him up after having a, a crappy Saturday for, you know, from collapsing. Thankfully, the um, event manager was also a first aider. <clears throat> I have to say, they are very well organised this um, these guys that took the car boot over because um, the old guy I think once Covid hit he gave up he'd been running it for years so I don't know why but I don't know he must have retired or something because after Covid when it reopened it reopened with um, these new people you know and they've gradually been making improvements as things have gone on <clears throat> I actually think they're doing a a grand job. 
I just wish people would stick to the rules, you know. It's an 11 a.m. strict start. I don't know what strict. It was always like that when the other guy ran it. Um, I believe it's something to do with the council regulations and rules. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you're not allowed on until 11 a.m. That's why they call it the late one, because a lot of car boots start like at 9 a.m. But this one, um, sellers can roll up from 7 a.m. and then buyers strictly at 11 a.m. And no dogs to be walked around either. You can carry them. You can put them in like one of them doggy pushchair things if you want. But you're not allowed to walk them. And I, I don't really understand the rules for that one. But it seems to be like that at a lot of car boot sales. <clears throat> Did I tell you this one was um, quite slow? I did get some interesting um, little die casts in that one as well. And I bought another um, Matchbox Transport. Was, uh, the die cast guy had his stall there today. And I got a few bits of him. And there was one Corgi model about that big. It was in my pocket and I took it out when I got to Mum's. I put it on a chair in her conservatory and I said, I bet I'm going to forget that. Guess what I've done? I forgot it. It's still sitting on that chair. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's going to configure windows. That's going to be ages doing that, isn't it? Right. Remove this. And yes, the socket is on because this power supply for this laptop is uh, plugged into the same one the spotlights are on. Oh, which I haven't mentioned either. I've added two more spotlights. In case you're thinking it looks a bit brighter in here. Right above you, there's two. One that side of the kitchen door and one that side. I daisy chained them off these two. So I've got to have these two on to use other. They pr they're pretty much the same as that, so there's no point in me turning you around to show them. I've got R80 spots, so there's bigger spots in those ones. These ones have got the slightly smaller ones. Same wattage, I believe. I believe they're all 60 watts or 60 watt equivalent. But I put them up there because I found. I was doing things like this. Because I did try doing a few diecast videos in here, but I gave up. I want to show them to the camera. This all looked dark. Because the lights were over there and not shining on me here. So that's why I put those two up there. And I can actually reach the switches on those so I can turn them off. Like this. There we go. That's one off. I can't reach the switches on these two because they're switched as well. But because of the worktop is here. No good. I'd have to climb on the worktop. But that didn't bother me because I didn't want them ones to um, be, you know, I didn't want the ability to turn those ones off individually. I think that is actually a 6 volt wedge bulb. In fact, I'm pretty certain it is. Because the ones for cars. The 12 volt ones didn't have like a textured glass bulb. This one has. I bet that. I need to keep that because it's bloody hard to get hold of. I bet that's for um, the old um, 6 volt dynamo lights, the Stormy Archer ones that used to use those. We've booted up. What size is the hard drive on this one? If it's going to let me. Keyboard's going to be a pain, it's not going to let me. No, it's not letting me select it. No. Thank you. No. For God's sake. No. You know, I had no idea Windows 7 had the snipping tool until now. Absolutely no idea. It's working for now, I just realised I've clicked on the wrong thing. For the hard drive, I wanted to go to a computer, didn't I?
Oh, I thought this had two hard drives on for a second. It's just a um, recovery partition, which is using 1.79 gigs. One point seven nine gigabytes free of a ten gigabyte partition. Uh, One hundred and seventy eight gigabytes free of two hundred and twenty two gigabytes. It's quite precise. So would that be a two twenty gigabyte? If they've rounded it off. Anyway, while well, we've got this window open, let's just double check the rest of the spec, shall we? And while the keyboard is allowing me to. So it's named the Athlon Dual Core QL-62, 2 GHz. And again, 3 GB of RAM, 2.75 usable. Ah. This has only got a 32-bit um, Windows 7 operating system. What is it? Windows 7 Professional. I'm surprised at that. I'm surprised it's only got a 32-bit. Oh, if I can find a replacement keyboard and I fix this up, I'm going to install a 64-bit version of Windows 7 onto this. I don't know why anyone would operate or would option for a 32-bit when this is perfectly capable, or should be perfectly capable of a 64-bit um, system. Shut down. And I might steal your charger to charge up one of these. In fact, I will. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get some dinner because I'm hungry. I haven't eaten yet, and Smudge hasn't eaten yet either. Is he still down there? No, he's disappeared. He won't be now. I don't like bloody stones. I don't matter what the date is, I'm not going to eat them. <clears throat> it's ridiculous. I've only had them in there a couple of days, literally. Here he is. <laughs> I knew it. As soon as I rattled this, we will see what it does if I rattle one of his treats packets. Seriously, I'm glad there's no glass in that window because I wouldn't be if I rattled it with him around. The way he jumps through there. Right, plug you in there. Now I've got a little green charge light on. Good. I'll put you lot over there. I'm, just, I'm going to leave that on charge for a few hours, I think. Oh yeah. In that big Dell, the Windows 7 Dell, I found this in there. Sims 4. No good to me. I've never played that game, actually. I think I have got several um, discs of it and you know an upgrade discs and all sorts, but I've never ever actually played it. Right, so thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the um, the paranormal. That I spoke about at the beginning of the video. And, uh, oh yeah, don't forget, in the video description down below, I'll put links to my other two um, YouTube channels. I've got a gaming channel and I've got the Lego channel. Um, and the Discord server. So uh, feel free to head on over there and join us for a chat and whatnot. Um, if you'd like to, of course. And uh, on that note, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.